welcome everybody to the I'm Fat Podcast. Uh, uh, snacks are uh, best saved for later. With Jay Zawoski. That man ate all our shrimp and two plastic lobsters. And Rick Camp. Out the mist came a beast more stomach than man. <laughs> Welcome in to another edition of the I'm Fat Podcast, brought to you by our sponsors, Charlie the Bacon Guy, Mazda of Orland Park, Fredo's Culinary Kitchen, and Nick and Ivy Brewing. I am Rick Camp alongside fellow fat Jay Zawoski. Jay, it has, uh, it's been a week. A lot has gone on. Hockey season is here in, in you know, full, <laughs> full, full throat, full bore. I don't know the best way to go about that. Sure. But probably never mind those. either way is fine yeah let's just let's just let that one be but uh but yes it's been a a rainy week it's been a dreary week it's been a busy week but we are here i feel like i haven't talked to you in forever and i know we, right we recorded sunday didn't we or was it yeah. saturday sat i think it was saturday whatever it was it feels like it's been i feel like we missed like two shows and we haven't it's very strange yeah anyway i'm glad we're here now I have a lot mm-hmm. to talk about. You have a lot to talk about, so we're not going to waste too much time getting to it. But make sure you're following us on all of our social medias at I'm Fat Pod. That is Twitter, X, uh, Instagram, TikTok, Facebook. We've got the Facebook uh, I'm Fat Podcast fans page, which is great fun. Tons of good stuff on there always. If you can't get our recommendations, go on there and you'll get everyone's. Like mm-hmm. it or not. Uh, right. <laughs> we've got our Patreon, <laughs> patreon.com slash I'm Fat Podcast. And of course, no, I'm Fat Pod. And remember, mm-hmm. follow us on YouTube. New episodes, they drop on the podcast on Monday. The video goes up on Tuesday. YouTube.com slash I'm Fat Podcast. We're over our 1,000 threshold. Yes. Now we need to hit like the hours listened thing, which is like right there. And then we can start okay. making some money off YouTube, which would be great. Um, also, we've got our merch shop, I'm Fat Merch.com. Yes. We just had a sale. Thank you to everyone. Rick, good idea of us reminding people of the sale. Because yes. I think people actually took it to heart, wrote it down, because we had way more sales than we usually get. So nice. we got to remember to do that. So keep in mind when RT public mm-hmm. sales come up. And I we'll think the next know. one's the, was it 26th through 29th? That's off the top of my head. I don't have my normal sheet with me, but yeah. I believe that's what it is. See. It's the it's right before the end of the month. Okay, let's see. I know that for sure. Do, 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 do. Mm-hmm. This is not going to be easy to find. Ba, ba, ba. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know. I'll yeah, find it and fine. we'll tweet it out. But yeah, that, that sounds yeah. right, like right before the end of the month. Yeah. Um, so keep Something an eye out. We'll let lines. you know on our social media channels if mm-hmm. we remember. And if we don't, it's our loss because then people won't buy shirts. And there you go. Um, all right. I think that's everything. Um, yeah. Last week, you mentioned the return of hockey. Mm-hmm. I got to go to Pittsburgh um, for the first Hawks game of the season and had some good food there. But first, I need to talk about my trip out there. So Monday is when I left for Pittsburgh Mm -hmm. and uh, my flight was at six and anyone that knows me knows I have to be early all the time. I'm just super paranoid about that stuff. Yeah. So I got to the airport at two 30. Um, that was after, yeah, I'm, I'm sorry. I just, I know it's weird, but it's just how my brain works. Um, I like to be in the airport and just be like, I am here. I am Mm -hmm. settled. I can go for a walk. I can grab something to eat. And I'm not like running or rushing or worried. I'd rather be three hours early than worried at all. So that's why I operate that way. I had nothing to do with it. I mean, also the day you're flying out, it's not like you have plans. True. (laughs) That day is circled. You know, you're going to the airport that day. You don't book anything that day. So why not just go sit there and not worry? So anyway, hope and Eddie had the day off for indigenous people's day. Mm-hmm. Um, so we headed out to Elmhurst for lunch. We saw this place called Kanya Ramen, uh, 108 Schiller Street in Elmhurst, and we went there. And you know I've been on a ramen kick lately, Rick. This yes, is no have. secret. I've talked about this a lot. Um, well, here's something I'd never had before. And, and before our audience starts to yell at me and say, yeah, of course, Jay, this is an obvious thing. This is the wonton ramen. You can see in that bowl the mm-hmm. big hearty chicken wontons that were absolutely awesome. There's fried. You can see the fried onions here on the top left. Yep. Spinach. I think it's scallions are the other thing. A bunch of noodles. And I took the like, you know, they got the chili paste at the table. Yeah. Did like four big spoons of that. 
They, well, not big spoon. They have like the little serving spoon in there. Sure. I did four spoons of that in there, mixed it all up. Oh, my God. It was so good. The ramen at this place was amazing. And then uh, there's Hope and Addie kind of got the same thing. That's Hope. She got the pork ramen. Okay. And you could see the big hard-boiled egg in there and the fried onions mm-hmm. on top. And then Addie got the chicken ramen. Um, but, man, that place was awesome. If you're looking for good ramen in Elmhurst, 108 Schiller Street is the address. So that's where we started our day. Then we're like, mm-hmm. well, we've got some time to kill because I'm only gonna I'm gonna be five hours early instead of four. So yeah. I started walking down um <laughs> walking down York Street there mm-hmm. and stumbled upon a place that you might have some interest in. Hello Donut. Yes. And I know, I think, spoiler alert, this is where you spent Donut Sunday. This is where Donut Sunday was spent. <laughs> All right. So it was really great. Really mm-hmm. loved everything we had there. There is the one I got. That is the Biscoff cookie butter donut. Yes. Absolutely killer. Uh, that is the cinnamon sugar pretzel. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, this place was great. Uh, it is at 116 North York Street. Uh Probably among the best donuts I've ever had. I'll let you do the full segment here, but sure, wonderful. And then before we get to your donut Sunday, mm-hmm. um, Hope loves caramel apples. Do you know this about Hope? I feel like I did. Okay, they're like her favorite thing. So we walked by Kilwins. You know, Kilwins yep. right there. Oh yeah, there's Kilwins everywhere. Yeah, and I'm like, all right, I'm gonna get you know before I leave town, I'm gonna I'm gonna get my wife. Uh, you know, I'm gonna get my wife uh, um, a oh, caramel what? apple. Oh, okay. I want you to guess. <laughs> no, no. What a caramel apple at Kilwins cost. Now, remember, folks, for those of you playing at home, a caramel apple is an apple mm-hmm. dipped in caramel and nuts. That's all it is. I'm going to say 550 More? $10. A normal size <laughs> apple. I mean, it was a bigger than usual apple, but it wasn't okay. like a watermelon size apple that we consider paying ten dollars for. Okay, Andy's went yes. to Andy's this week. They have caramel apples, and they're like ten, eleven bucks. Andy's frozen this custard. Is, yeah, they just have like caramel apples to buy. Yeah, and it's one. Yeah, what am I missing here? I I don't know. But this is a travesty, and this is why everybody should be getting the caramel apple pops. Because if the <laughs> apple market is going to get out of hand like this, then we need to fight back. And the best way we can fight back is with caramel apple pops and just giving the finger to the to the actual caramel apple market. That's ridiculous. Wait, so yeah. are the ones at Andy's, are they like special? Are they? I think they might be. I just saw like a banner or something. Like, like I did a banner, Rick. <laughs> <laughs> i'm sorry i don't care it's, it's so stupid I, I i was you know i insisted on getting yeah. hope a caramel apple i'm like i'm leaving town i want you to be happy you know yada sure. yada let's just go in here it's a cool place anyway and they rang me up like that'll be ten dollars i'm like oh, uh, what <laughs> right <laughs> in this I, didn't realize I was getting a three pack yeah like what are you talking yeah and isn't it like the three pack of affy tapples yeah it's like six or seven bucks isn't it Yes. I it, I could it's see if ridiculous. it was one of those that had like M&Ms on it and like a bunch of stuff or mm-hmm. maybe it was like specially wrapped or no, it was your basic run of the mill caramel apple. That's ridiculous. I uh, that's old that's asinine. Corner. But still, I mean, come on. I know I'm I'm acting old manish, but in your right mind, would you ever expect to pay no. $10 nope. for a freaking apple dipped in caramel? No. What can an apple cost, Rick? Ten dollars. Ten dollars. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the arrested development account is up to two. Up to two already, man. That's, that's killer. <laughs> I, I'm. I Maybe was... Kilwin saw other people doing it that weren't having success, and were like, you know, other people just talk themselves into these things. But maybe it'll work for us. Well, yeah, like <laughs> I, there's there's also that philosophy of well, you're in here, you yeah. came in here to buy. Like you're not just gonna walk in here and not buy mm-hmm. something. So they kind of got you by the short and curlies the second you walk in the door. Mm-hmm. But 
I love seeing them at the Chicago theater this week. <laughs> the short and girlies. Yeah. Um, I no that, that I'm just not going to go in there anymore. Right. I can't afford that shit. I'm leaving town. No, <laughs> <laughs> I don't need my credit you- card. I don't need my account uh, getting it locked. Cause I bought a caramel apple. Right. Absurd. Was it a good caramel apple? At least I didn't even get a bite of it. To be honest, hope took it home. Ooh. Okay. Yeah. But I got the donuts, which was good. And that Biscoff yeah. one, man. Oh yeah. Just great. Yeah, I got that. We got that one today too. Well, let's go so, through it because I got the uh, I got the picture here. You of got your, the picture. Uh, okay. So the rundown of, of donuts. The right. <laughs> I'm not ashamed. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> Empowerment. Yeah. yeah. Right. Okay. So from top, if you're watching on the YouTube's from top left to bottom right, you have the blueberry old fashioned. Great one. The double chocolate old fashioned. The Biscoff cookie, a bear claw. Get it? Because that's supposed to be a Chicago Bears. Oh, I thought it was a Halloween thing, but yes, I get it. Um, The apple cider cake donut and the s'more. Ooh. Did we not see? Maybe we didn't see the s'more when we were there. Maybe they were gone. So if uh, Sam and I always go over our rankings of these when we do them. Okay. And there was a clear top three and bottom three. Okay. The top three are the biscoff the s'more and the blueberry yes those three are the top tier and the other three were like none none were bad but like the bear claw was fine the double chocolate was actually not very sweet at all it was it was pretty like dark chocolate like like kind of a bitter bitter ish yeah like i i would have wanted just a little bit more um a little be just a little more sweet and then the apple cider cake was it was fine. Like there was nothing nothing special about it. I've got a hot take, and maybe we've discussed this before. I know I just had this conversation with somebody, mm-hmm. but apple cider donuts are always sort of better in concept than in reality. Yeah, there's very few that do it really, really well, but when you do it really well, it is great. I feel like they don't last long either. Like if you like times we've been to Door County and have brought home like apple cider donuts or mm-hmm. or the cherry cider donuts that they have there. Um, if you don't have them like the day you buy them, they get like kind of like real dry and almost hard to eat. They're so dry. Mm-hmm. So I almost never go for those cider donuts unless I'm at a place like that and I know they're fresh, fresh, fresh. Yeah. Um, yeah. I've I've always kind of been. This is a great idea. I really, really want this. And then by the time I have it, I'm like, eh, it wasn't what I hoped. And I think I've learned my lesson finally on that. Okay, that's fair. Yeah, this one I've had really good ones, but this just it's not like this is bad. Like if you if I made that choice, like I'm not mad at myself for making that choice. Sure. But so if you're looking at the the on the s'more one. That swirl is 0% icing and all marshmallow. Ooh. That is, let me tell, that was like that and the blueberry were my, they, those were neck and neck for me, one and two. And the Biscoff was like a close third. Then there was a bit of a drop off. And then I would probably go uh, apple cider, double chocolate, bear claw. Okay. Is the, but like, again, they're all good. It's just, we're, we're dealing within levels of good. Sure. Is that a uh, s'more one? Is that like an old fashioned style donut? Uh, no, it's okay. not. It's not an old fashioned. It just kind of looks like it in the photo there, but it does. But looks... no, it's, it's more, it's more yeasty. Okay. But it, man, that with just like the, the yeast and then the regular glaze and then the marshmallow on top. And mm, it was, it was really, really good. And that might've been. Maybe the best blueberry donut I've had. Have you had stands? I th- if I have, it's been a long okay. time. The stands blueberry old fashioned is great. Okay. It's and I, you know, I like stands. I don't love it. I think. Yeah, that, I think I think it's overrated. I think. Well, here I think that the ones that are their old fashions are great. Mm-hmm. It's like those Nutella pockets, like all those things that sound great but are actually just a big mess and don't taste very yes. good in reality. Mm-hmm. Like so, if you stick to the old fashions at San, you'll be you'll be good off. But the ones they yeah. oh, also, the ones they sell like in the store, mm-hmm. skip those. Don't buy yeah. those. They're not they're not as good. So no. either go to a stands or and when you do, just get the old fashions. Yep. All right. Well, this has my sweet tooth uh, pulsating, and mm-hmm. it's making me think of our friends at Fredo's Bakery. 
and yeah. those killer brownies and killer cookies that they have all the time, uh, head over to fredosbakery.com and get some brownies, get some cookies. They come in those two pound boxes and they are great. If you've got an anniversary or mm-hmm. a get well wish or a baby's born any occasion, we're coming up on holiday season here. There are going to be a multitude of reasons to get them. Absolutely. And uh, they've got different kind of specials and seasonal uh, options all the time at fredosbakery.com. So if you're trying to find something a little unique, you're tired of, you know, buying a candle or buying jewelry that's going to just go on the pile or whatever. It's really thoughtful. It's something that you're both going to enjoy. Uh, And what's great about the two pound boxes of cookies and brownies is that they're all individually wrapped. So mm-hmm. you don't have to worry about, like, if I don't eat all this stuff within a couple of days, it's going to be uh, inedible. No, they last a long time. Every individual item is made fresh, but it's shrink-wrapped. So it's good. It's it's almost funny. Like, you could tell they wrap them in-house because, like, the, the wrapping can be, like, a little gooey sometimes. Like, there's, like, string. It's yeah. not like these are not prepackaged. They are individually wrapped. So right. fredosbakery.com. And then if you're in the Schaumburg area – and you're looking for some great burgers, great pizza, uh, great tenders, cheese sticks, Cajun bites, everything that makes your mouth water, fredospizza.com, Fredo's Culinary Kitchen at 628 South Roselle Road in Schaumburg is the place to go. Head over to fredospizza.com, place your order online, use the code I'm fat, and you will save 10% on your order every time at fredospizza.com. So make sure you do that. That's a really good way to know that to let them know that you're hearing about them from us is using mm-hmm. that promo code. And why not save yourself some money? Right. It works every time. Yeah. Oh, let me, so let me squeeze in something here to go from my chronology of, from Elmhurst. Sure. So after getting the donuts today, cause we're recording on Sunday, we went to my place because Sam and I are putting some work in just fixing some things up at my place to, just to get that thing ready to uh, possibly be able to sell soon. Uh-huh. So that's a whole nother thing. Um, I was going through stuff that Wait, I had. I pause you, you. Yes. It's a year and you're already getting ready to move in. I love it. And you're basically yeah. moved in anyway. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, like, that's why you have a deconstructed mop behind you. <laughs> Glad you made, I was going to do the same thing. Just got it. Cause for, for those that don't figure it out through context clues, Sam absolutely hates the fact that I call it a deconstructed mop, <laughs> even though, even though like, you could totally see it. The more you hate it, the more we do it. <laughs> yes, exactly. Because we're great. So I'm so I'm going through stuff at my place, just trying to see like what can I donate, whatever. And, and I'm just opening up tubs that I haven't opened in a while. Mm-hmm. I found one of my fat credentials in there, and if I was smart, I would have brought it home with me. In the NIU marching band, there were because you know we're cool. Uh, there were <laughs> there Always. were like you know just like superlative awards and whatever Mm -hmm. the 2005 winner for most resembles his instrument (laughs) this guy (laughs) what a great award (laughs) isn't it like it'll either go to fat guy playing tuba stick person playing playing flute i like well I won't make a trombone joke, but (laughs) it just feels like a good time, Rick. (laughs) There he goes. Yep. Oh God. Yeah. I won that in 2005 and had totally forgotten about it. Oh, that is, that is, it's, it's a really great. Cause I was like going through stuff and it was like in the same folder as like my high school diploma and like. ACT scores, which were depressing to look at. And then it's like, what's this thing that looked like it was made with greetings workshop on a (laughs) windows 95 (laughs) computer. Like who still has this gateway? Um, and it it said when it was just like most resembles instrument, 2005 Rick can. That's amazing. (laughs) And that's when you were pretty svelte by standards. Yeah. Oh yeah. I am much more of a tub of goo now than I ever was then. (laughs) That's awesome. <laughs> that is, you got to take a picture of that and tweet that out. Yeah, That's amazing. I will. That is amazing. Oh my God. All right. Well, <laughs> I want to talk about Pittsburgh. Yes. So let me, little sidebar here. Mm-hmm. We have entered the Airbnb era, right? Yes. Where this becomes a default. We are on the other side now. 
It's oh. it's hotel time again. Okay, the Airbnb we had in Pittsburgh, mm-hmm. and I'm not blaming anyone for this. Airbnb is what it is, right? We're trying to accommodate four people in a place where we can set up equipment and do a podcast from. That's challenging. So an Airbnb makes the most sense. Sure. This place we stayed in Pittsburgh. There was blood stains on the floor. There was dirt on the floor, like where the door opens. So like under the door, like where the door okay. hangs over the opening. Sure. Uh, Mario's bed had hair in it. Mm. Um, and then being outside, you felt in danger. Oh. And we were right in downtown Pittsburgh, but it was like the one block. Yeah. That seemed to attract, and there, we never had any problem. No one said anything, but it was just like, mm-hmm. I'm uh, not so sure about this place. Yes. Um, so that's inside. But the first night we get there, we get there late because our flight's at 6. So we get in like, I don't know, like 9, 9.30 by the time we're there and like settled and everything. Mm-hmm. And I don't know how much you've traveled like out of Chicago, but what I have learned from my years of traveling like to Cleveland or Boston or whatever is it like big cities just close? Yeah. Like at night, there's just nothing open. Mm-hmm. So we were looking all over downtown Pittsburgh to find a place to eat and saw one pizza place that was open by us. It was called Genoa Pizza and Bar. Also, the fact that you're leaving Chicago and you have to get a, go to a pizza place. Well, it was the only thing open. Right. So there's the pizza. You could see my buddy Greg Boyce in there in the background uh, staring longingly at the pizza. He described it as if Little Caesars was really good. (laughs) Interesting. It was an accurate description. So I got to say, Genoa's Mm -hmm. my kind of place. You feel like you are maybe a little bit in danger. Like if you look Mm -hmm. at someone the wrong way. Yeah. We believe a couple went into the bathroom to have sex. Oh, okay. Because the bartender was like, ah, geez, behave yourselves. <laughs> you know, like, she's like yelling at people because they yep. came out of the bathroom together. Uh, oh. People were loudly arguing. And she's like, it's mm. about to get crazy in here. And I said, why? Like, what's going to happen? She's like, well, we're the only place open this late. And like third shift's about to get off. So oh. anyway, the food was killer. The food was great. If you're in Pittsburgh and you need a quick pizza and it's late, uh, don't hesitate. Genoa Pizza and Bar, 111 Market Street uh, in Pittsburgh. It was really, really good pizza. Mm. Uh, Mario and Steven, our producer, got wings that they really liked too. Um, but man, this was like nice soft crust, like Sabaro style, like the really yeah. soft crust. Um, good sausage. It was a really, really good pizza. I don't, you know, I, it's not a tourist place, that's for sure. Yeah. Um, it, very much locals in there. Okay. Um, I, I was struggling, man, with the Pittsburgh accent. Yeah, that's... I expected everyone to sound like Wani. Yeah, I think that's more West... Well, that is more West. Yeah, I don't, but, I don't uh, know. But it, So there were a few people like that. Mm-hmm. But I felt like it was harder to talk to, like, women in Pittsburgh. Okay. I don't know why. There's just this strange... Like, the, when, the place we're going to talk about next where we went for lunch, I was like... I had to ask her like two or three times what she was saying, which was I felt awful okay. about it. Sure. And part of it is I have shitty hearing because I've worn headphones for the last twenty five years. Right? Um, is it towards like a like a Baltimore accent? Where like Baltimore is one of the weirdest accents out there. I don't know. I, let's see. I'm gonna Google describe Pittsburgh accent. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay. Chat GPT. So it says like the vowel in words like caught and caught. So like caught like a bed and caught like caught a ball oh, are pronounced are the, the same, same way. Yes. Easy. The vowel in words like pout can sound somewhat like the vowel sounds like in words like pat. The vowel words in the vowel in words like stuff can be pronounced with the tongue further down in the mouth. Yo. It's just a very strange uh and I, I know part of it is the Pennsylvania Dutch. Um, yeah. element of it. I like it. That it should is, be an expansion team. The Pennsylvania, <laughs> the Pennsylvania Dutch. Dutch. <laughs> the Flying Dutchman or something. <laughs> right. But I, I enjoyed it. I thought it was incredibly mm-hmm. interesting because I, I, I'm I'm a big, I like, I think accents are cool. I like yeah. the whole like origins of them and why, like what is the mix? Sure. But I did struggle with it a little bit. 
it was a little bit tough to get. But anyway, people are going to be mad at me. And I know Charlie's going to be mad at me because everyone's like, you're going to Pittsburgh. You got to go to Pramani Brothers. That's like the big Pittsburgh thing. It's like sandwiches and they put fries on the sandwiches and it's sure. But, but as we were looking for places to eat, Mm -hmm. we found a place called Burgatory. And let me tell you, I am quite glad we made the trip to Burgatory because I sent you a picture of the shakes. Yes. From there. Uh, I did not send you the burger menu. And if you're looking at YouTube, it's on your screen right now. Uh, I got the all day brunch. And it says breakfast spice fitty fitty with American cheese over easy egg, applewood smoked bacon, and Tabasco mayo on brioche. Okay. The fitty fitty is a burger that is half ground beef, half bacon. Oh. Oh, yeah. Okay. It was absolutely awesome. Um, There's so many things I wanted to try. <laughs> like, I could seriously yeah. keep on any of these. They also had the thing like where you can sit down at your table. Mm-hmm. And like fill out a sheet, cool of exactly that, that's like, perfect. Yeah, of exactly the kind like toppings and stuff you want. Mm-hmm. And then the the coupe de grass uh, really was the <laughs> it was the shakes they had there. Yeah, the shakes were killer. Um, there's milk and cereal, which was um, like cocoa puffs, not cocoa puffs, mm-hmm. like fruity pebbles. Yeah, campfire s'mores. I got the chacos taco, which is crushed waffle cone, fudge, peanuts. Uh, you know, it's like a chocolate taco, strawberry yeah. pretzel salad, Oreo peanut butter pie. That was the other one I was going to get. Caramel pretzel, salted Nutella crunch, birthday cake, cookie monster, and cold brew brownie. Um, there's my burger. Yeah. You can see it's got the pitchfork in it. <laughs> nice. And that Tabasco mayo on the top left was very solid. I actually liked it and actually put it on my burger. Okay. And then they've got those like homemade chips. Mm-hmm. They had fries too, but the chips looked really good. So I got those. That's my uh, shake, and it looks pink, but it's not. It's just the lighting. Okay. That's like the the Choco Taco shake. Mm-hmm. Uh, there's another angle on it. Nice. Where, where the hell did the other one go as I scroll through photos like a noob? <laughs> I had the Fruity Pebble one in here. There it is. There's the Fruity oh, Pebble. Okay. Yeah, so um, everyone loved the shakes, and that was kind of the deal. Like the deal breaker was, hey, if we go to this place, not only are we going to get awesome burgers, we're going to get some mm-hmm. shakes too. And it's right by PNC. So PNC has nice. like a whole kind of like, you know, ballpark district. Sure. Kind of thing where there's a bunch of different bars. Not quite like the Deer mm-hmm. District. Not that big. Yeah. And all um, six people that go to games are walking around there. <laughs> yeah. It was. It's such a beautiful park, man. I know. It's like number one on the hit list. <laughs> Not to watch the team, but to go to the park. Yeah, we should go. That'd be fun. We should do make a yeah. summer trip. Um, I mean, because the food out there was good. I do want to try Permani Brothers because mm-hmm. um, I heard good stuff. But we really had basically one meal there. We got there that night. We had the pizza. Yeah. Woke up, grabbed a quick breakfast, and then went to morning skate. Mm-hmm. Then we did a pre-recorded pregame show, then had lunch. And then by the time lunch was over, like we had to go to the game. Yeah. And we just basically ate at the game. So mm-hmm. we didn't have a lot of time to explore and, and eat a ton. But uh, if you're ever in Pittsburgh, go to Burgatory. It was absolutely awesome. Like, honestly, one of the best burgers I've ever had. Wow. Yeah. It was just that fitty fitty burger, half mm-hmm. bacon, half beef. And they're not all that way. Only like a certain, certain sure. assortment of their burgers are that. But, oh, my God. I, I think I hear Charlie the Bacon Guy getting on a plane right now. Yeah. Uh, heading out for that Fitty Fitty Burger. It was aw- like As soon as I saw that on the menu, I said, okay, mm-hmm. whatever I'm getting is going to have that. Yeah. And I did. And I did. And it was great. Nice. Yeah. Okay. So, I'm going to go. I'll, I'll go with the. I had a. I found candy this week. When by I, I mean, Sam didn't. She brought it home. And. We shared it. Nerds candy corn. Yes, you sent me this. Nerds have been getting creative, and I will maintain that the very berry clusters or whatever they're called are my new, my favorite new ish candy. Hundred oh, percent. The and like not, the regular the ones are clusters. fine. The gummy clusters, yes. yes. The gummy clusters. The very berry ones are insane, and I can't get enough of them. Is that the blue one? 
Yes. Yes, the blue one is better. I agree. Yes. So, okay. So the Nerds candy corn is... So the shell... So it's a shell with one flavor. And then inside is another flavor that's more of like a gummy uh like just softer chewy inside like it says on there okay and the shell is not as hard as the like the bigger nerds you know like the the big ones that have the really hard shell yeah uh it's not as hard as that but also just the flavor combinations that you have on the inside of those are really good like when sam would read one off we were doing it like it was a like a um like a tasting menu <laughs> a flight. where it's like, Oh, there's this. Yeah. a fl-. So there's the strawberry shell. Okay. That has strawberry grape inside. It's like flavor combinations on the inside. Oh, the grape shell has strawberry grape on the inside. So you get that. Then the strawberry lemon shell and the blue raspberry shell each have the blue raspberry fruit punch inside Mm. and then you have the orange shell and the watermelon shell that each have the cherry watermelon inside oh yeah now i would say for me and this is not a shocker to anybody the blue raspberry like the the blue raspberry fruit punch inside was my favorite so and with either of the the strawberry lemon actually strawberry lemon with then blueberry blue raspberry fruit punch yeah buddy okay that's some living. I would say the orange on the shell was maybe a little too strong to where the cherry watermelon gets washed away a little bit. However, highly recommended. Absolutely should be tried by everybody. Infinitely better than actual candy corn. Okay. I'm with you on that. I like candy corn. I prefer the pumpkins to the mm-hmm. candy corn. Right. Um, but yeah, the, the fact that they're soft is very intriguing. Yeah, it's... I wasn't, I had, I was a little worried going in because I'm like, this seems a little too kitschy. Yeah. Like, we're just trying to do a Halloween thing. We're trying to make fetch happen. You know what? <laughs> fetch happened. All right. It, it's, it's like, it's not as good as the gummy cluster, the blue gummy cluster, because I'm telling you, that very berry is the, my favorite new thing that I've tried within the last, like, I don't even know how long. Yeah. Those are awesome. I love those. The gummy clusters are just incredible. And like we talk about texture with like the crunch and the mm-hmm. and the soft. Yeah, it's so good. And I imagine the candy corn's got a little bit of that too. Like there's probably a little yeah. bit of that crunch with the outside shell. Yeah, a little bit. Not not a ton. So not as much crunch as you're getting on those gummy clusters, but enough to where if you want the textural difference, you get something. Okay, cool. Um, I will say this too, by the way, because uh, I did see those at Walgreens. Um, if you are planning on getting your COVID booster and or your mm-hmm. flu shot, if you do it at Walgreens, you get a $10 rewards credit for each one. Oh. And then you activate it by like making a dollar or more transaction. So what I did yesterday is I got my two shots mm-hmm. and then I had, um, I bought like a pack of gum. Yeah. And then added my rewards and I bought uh, Reese's Pumpkin. And added nice. my rewards, and now I have twenty dollars of credit sitting in my Walgreens account. Awesome! That I think we're probably going to use for Halloween candy. Sure. So if you haven't gotten your booster yet or your flu shot yet, it's I, Walgreens is you get a ten dollar rewards credit for each one you get. Nice. So if you get both, like I did, um, mm-hmm. you get twenty bucks. And I, I, you and I recorded a little bit late later today because mm-hmm. I started. I got the shot yesterday at like two. Okay. Or both shots. And I started feeling kind of crappy around like eight or nine mm-hmm. last night. And then during the day today, I just felt like, you know, the way you feel the day before you get a cold. Yes. That's how I felt most of the day today until okay. like six. And then yeah. like, I, I'm totally, totally feel like a hundred percent now. Mm-hmm. So it didn't, the, I think the first booster knocked me on my ass. Like that was actually like a day of, really not yeah. feeling good okay um but this is uh this one is was not as not as impactful as the, as the last one so um i know you've got a topic you want to bring up mm-hmm. so hold on to it because i'm okay. interested in this because i was going to ask you about this too okay uh, but first we want to tell you about our friends at mazda of orland park 8910 west 159th street in you guessed it orland park 
708-444-3200. Call our buddy Eric Vates. Set up a test drive. Come into the showroom. Take a look at the new cars out there. Man, I love that CX-50. Ooh, mm -hmm. I've got my eye on that one for next time. But I told you all, I've had a couple like little service things pop up. I had a um, this week got a little notification on my little car's computer that says the mm -hmm. air in your front left tire is a little low. I said, crap. It's very nice. It tells me which tire. I like that a lot yes. and how low. Um, but pull up to our neighborhood um, service station that has like a little air pump. And I saw right in there, there was a screw. I, without God, I am screwed. So I <laughs> saw that, filled up the tire, and called them and said, hey, I got to get in to get this tire fixed. They're like, mm -hmm. come right in, boom, patch it up, out the door, no charge. Remember when you used to get air for free? The air is free at Pete's Auto in Homewood. Oh, okay. Yeah, Good free air them. pump. Yeah, free air pump right there on Dixie Highway. If you're uh, 187th and Dixie Highway, if you're in the area. <laughs> yeah, Honk at me and wave and then pull into Pete's Auto for some free air. <laughs> Um, tell them your name, Sancho. <laughs> tell them your name, Sancho, exactly. <laughs> um, but yeah, gr great service. I signed up when I bought my car. There was, was like this uh, extra care package. Okay. That was maybe an extra 10 bucks a month on my car payment. Mm -hmm. And it covered like correct windshield, like all the kind of nuisance stuff that nice. you can't really avoid, but it costs you a ton of money to fix. Mm -hmm. And tires were included on that. So uh, any sort of damage to my tire will be totally replaced. They were able to patch this one up. It's perfect. No leaks, uh, no low tire, in and out, no problem. Just, I can't, I'm so impressed with the service at Mazda World yeah. Park. And I know, like, that's a huge part of buying a car is you can pretty much buy a car anywhere, but you want that that hands-on, that personal touch. And uh, Eric and the folks at Mazda World Park give it to you. So check them out, 8910 West 159th Street, or go to MazdaOfOrlandPark.com. All right, hit me. Okay, so in the Chicagoland area, and honestly, like a lot of, it seems like everywhere east of the Mississippi, more or less, especially especially a little north, it was a lot of rain this week. Yeah. A lot of cloud cover, not much sun, and the, the work week dragged. There were certain days where I'm looking at the people I'm working with, and we're like, okay, we've gotten a lot, you know, a lot done today. This day's probably over. It's 2.30. <laughs> like, what is going on? So it's just like, it's dreary outside, you know, and especially like for me where I'm like in my first office job, yeah. I'm like, I'm trying to figure out ways. Like, how do you, how do you combat the dreariness? Like, is it something you eat? Is there like something you can eat? Is it something that you do? Like to just like, do you have to like get up and like take a lap? Like if, if you're sitting at your, if you're doing a lot of like prep, you're looking, you're doing some statistical deep dive that's saying, Hey, this Connor Bedard guy, he's going to be pretty good. <laughs> do you need to like stand up and like take a lap? Is that what, like, how do people get over the dreariness of those types of weeks? Because it wasn't just dreary. It was also like rainy. So you couldn't even really like go outside and do a whole lot. So I guess I just don't know, like, are there foods that do that for people? Or maybe it's like, Hey, normally I'm a one or two cup, a coffee person. And I go for that third and I'm set. Maybe that's what it is. I don't know, but whew, I was, I was battling it this week. Well, I will say this coffee certainly helps. Mm -hmm. And as a dude with an office job, you might need to start. I was 33 when I started drinking coffee and the yeah. first week I'm like, this is not great. And now yeah. I love coffee. I like, mm -hmm. it's just, it's like your, it's like beer. Yeah. <laughs> instead of, instead of feeling like shit after you drink it, you feel great. That's the difference. Yeah. And I'll say like coffee buzz, like when you have pop, it's like, whoop, whoop. it's like big peaks yeah. and valleys. Coffee mm -hmm. is a nice level. It gets you okay. through the day. So I will suggest that. I know you probably won't do it. The reason I'm glad you asked this is because I was going to mm -hmm. ask you. Are you insatiably freaking hungry all of a sudden? Yes. Like more than usual? Yes. I have like no end to the food I can eat right now. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if it's the weather. I don't know if it's maybe it's just boredom because I'm just. It could be. I'm home and I'm not like out or doing stuff. I'm not like it's softball practice or wherever I might be. I'm just like sitting on the couch or like working on my computer. I'm just like, maybe I'm just bored. But I feel yeah. like. Since we got back from Pittsburgh, I could just endlessly eat food. 
And that's exactly when the weather started changing. And I love this weather. The rain was yeah. a little much the last two days, but like it has been. Give me the cool, give me the damp, give me the breezy. Sure. I love it. But I have just been insatiably hungry. Yeah, and and then you also start to transition into more of your fall foods. So yesterday, uh, we had my family over. So my mom and my brothers came over for dinner. We had chili, mm. and it was it was great. You know, like on that on the way this week has been to have chili and like really good <laughs> cornbread along with it. Oh, like yeah. it was it totally hit the spot. And then today, Sam and I were like, "Well, we got leftovers, so let's just have our leftovers." And just like couldn't stop eating it. A because it was really good, and B just like again, you just want to keep eating right now. Yeah. And then it's like even before, like just not even like long before, like literally things are in the microwave to reheat them. And what am I doing? I'm munching on oyster crackers just to, just to be doing something. So it's like, what are we doing here? It's that time of the year. We're fat enough as is like, we'll add to it naturally. Don't worry about that. But to kick it into overdrive like this, it might be a little much. Yeah. So I just Googled this um, yeah. and it says, why are we, I said, why do I get so hungry when autumn begins? And this is from mm -hmm. the Morrison Center. I don't know what that is. <laughs> but it says... The Morrison Center. Morrison, babe. It says, in cooler weather, your body needs to burn more calories to maintain body temperature to protect your health and keep you warm. The system that controls appetite signals you to eat more. You also may notice a shift in food that appeals to you. Suddenly, you crave warmer, heartier soups and mm -hmm. stews. Baby, you got a stew going. <laughs> Absolutely. Last night, you mentioned cornbread. Three, three Arrested Development references yes. so far. I went to uh, Whole Foods on mm -hmm. Halstead and uh, Madison because I just wanted some friggin' soup. And I knew they sure. had, like, the hot bar soup, so I got some tortilla soup. And they had jalapeno cornbread just mm -hmm. right there as if they were yeah. preying on me, like, right next to the soup. Mm -hmm. Like, it was, like, literally in a basket. Oh, Sam put green chilies in our, in oh, our cornbread. Yeah. Oh, it, oh, dude. It was so good. I just was like, <laughs> and then Hope got, uh, tonight they went to Costco mm -hmm. and brought home the tortilla soup from Costco. You get like two big, like, yeah. you know, probably two or three pints in each thing. Mm -hmm. And me, Hope, and Andy took down both of those containers tonight for dinner nice. of tortilla soup. It was, by the way, the Costco, it's like the Kirkland tortilla soup. Really, really yeah. good. Um, okay. But man, I just, I can't stop. Like, I'm, I'm thinking about when we're done here, I'm probably going to go make a pot mm -hmm. of ramen. Just okay. Because I'm. I'm just so freaking hungry. I can't. Right. Well, and, and then this, this just made me think of, too, when you bring up the soup is I'm like, oh, man, I was in Lombard today. Didn't go to Gnarly Knots. Bad on me because uh, they have they're open on Sundays a little bit now. But also they sell frozen soups oh, so yeah. that you can bring that home. And like their soups are great. So like that's another thing you can do. Another reason to go there in this type of weather, too. So like I'm just thinking like, yeah, like I, I'm not a soup person unless it's like fall weather at the warmest. So oh, yeah. to have this now, like now it is, we are firmly into like, once we hit like highs in the mid fifties, lows are into the mid forties or lower. We are firmly in soup season. I'll tell you this though. I am sleeping like a baby. Yeah. I'm like a hibernating Same. bear, man. It's like, <laughs> yeah. I go to bed super full. Oh, I just had my midnight ramen. I'm going to go mm -hmm. lay down and put on weight. And can't wait for the 4 a.m. poop. Oh, yeah. I have been good about that. I started taking probiotics because I think Look I told you, you I was either bound up or it was an absolute emergency and there was no in between. Yeah. So I started taking probiotics and it's actually helped. Look at nice. me being old. <laughs> A too true outcome old. <laughs> <laughs> so, dude, so true. It was either like, wow, it's been like a day and a half, or it's been like, I have to go right now. Right. <laughs> and there's no in between. Yeah. By the way, a little recommendation. Hmm. The best like hot bar soup you can buy. Okay. Mariano's chicken and dumpling. Yes. Oh my god. No doubt. So when I was working some weekends at the score, the Mariano's over there, I would even in like when it was like 20 degrees out i'd be walking my ass over there get that chicken and dumpling soup and walk my fat ass right back to, to prudential it is so good if you've never had yeah. the mariano's chicken and dumplings like seriously pause this 
and go get it right now. It is yeah. absolutely incredible, incredible soup. Um, oh, speaking of incredible, we got to tell you about our friends at Nick and Ivy, mm-hmm. our new favorite brewery out there in Lockport, 1026 South State Street, family owned by Paul and Chrissy. They have beer for everyone. Whether you are a beer connoisseur, whether you are a beer novice, whether you just like stuff that gives you a buzz and is nice and cold and goes down easy, they've got it for you at Nick and Ivy. And you go in there on a Saturday or a Sunday, you're going to watch Notre Dame kick USC's ass. You're going to watch the Viking kick, kick the Bears ass. <laughs> Whatever you're in for, you're going to get it at Nick and Ivy because it's not the kind of place that turns your nose up at sports. They know that you can like quality beer and like sports mm-hmm. too. And music because they've got live music. On their stage every Tuesday with their open mic, every Friday and Saturday, they've got acts come and play at their stage. No food served there, but there's great stuff right in the neighborhood that you are you're, you can bring it in. You can have it delivered there. Nick and Ivy doesn't care. The more the merrier. Come in there. Have a good time. Relax. You're going to love Nick and Ivy. Follow them on social media at Nick and Ivy Brewing or their website, NickIvyBrewing.com. That's N-I-K-I-V-Y Brewing.com. Again, that's 1026 South State Street in Lockport. All right. I uh, have I, to get there to do, have that happy hour autumn sound. Yeah, let's let's find a day. Let's uh, okay. let's put our heads up. We said this last week, but let's really do it. Yeah. I know I'm off Friday for what it's okay. worth. Um, okay. There's very few items that are produced by fast food places mm-hmm. that I'm completely out on. But can we talk about the Little Caesars Calzone? <laughs> have you seen this this ad? Yes. It yes, I have. Looks like shit in the it, ad. It looks <laughs> like hungry hungry hippos meets a pizza. It Think looks about like a someone hungry, hungry ran hippos over a, board. It looks like someone ran over a baby. <laughs> It might be okay. It it can't be great. There there's no <laughs> chance it's great. In the ad it looks gross. Yeah, like and they butter that shit up maybe <laughs> literally like to look good no matter what and then you see the real thing and it's like, "Oh, it looks like a dumpster fire, but it tastes good." This it doesn't look good here. No. It can only look worse <laughs> when you actually get it. Like yeah, maybe it's fine. Like that should be the slogan. The Calzoni. Maybe it's fine. <laughs> it like, might be okay. That's, the, that's the, what it tops out at. You probably won't die. Yeah, <laughs> seriously. Like there's yeah, th- like my my likelihood and I get I get what they're trying to do. Yeah. They're trying to do the whole breadstick and the pizza thing. Mm-hmm. And you got to do something different and look weird when your stuff isn't going to be as good. So you have to find your niche. You have you have to have a gimmick. However, find a better gimmick. Yeah, this is not it. Or at least make it look better. Right. It seriously looks like uh, like when you were in high school and you'd pin the frog to the board and dissect the frog. Yes. It's like splayed open. It looks like you it looks like you're gutting something. It looks yeah, it looks like you, you know how the gro- you like jewel folds their um oh my god, why am I going to I'm going to completely lose Oh, this is annoying. I'm completely losing the term. The cookies that uh, the cookies that my mom makes ever kolachkis. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Like the, how they fold their kolachkis more like so that they're tall as opposed to like just a, a four corner fold in. This looks like you took two kolachkis, you wanted them perpendicular from each other and smashed them into one with a hammer with a hammer. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it just looks bad. All right. I'm glad I'm not alone on this. No, this, this looks not great. No, the commercial is it, when the commercial isn't appealing. It's the same thing. I mean, with I the, guess uh, if you're if you're going to Little Caesars consistently, you're probably in an area with bad pizza, so they probably got you by the balls. Honestly, as is. though, like as far as five dollar pizzas go, Little Caesars is fine. Yeah, it is, and I like the crazy bread. But like mm-hmm. the other thing that I thought was like, is it the uh, Papa John's Pizzone? Yeah, that didn't look good on the commercial either. No, it didn't. No, you know what is good? The Rosati's Calzone. 
I bet. Rosati's calzone, good. Had Rosati's pizza for the first time in forever. Good. Uh, like, and I can confirm, I, since we last spoke, I've had my mm-hmm. Aurelio's uh, Italian beef and hot jar and pizza yeah. twice. <laughs> nice. Still great. Yes. By the way, remember Pockets? Pockets? There used to be a Pockets. You didn't work at NBC Tower, did you? I interned there, okay. but... So, like, remember there was, a, it was... Maybe it was Ontario or Ohio, or there was, like, a Chipotle... And it was like a, a pockets like right, ne- right next to it. And pockets is like a calzone place. Oh, yeah. Yeah. There's one by my work and I can't remember if I liked it or not. I, d- I have no recollection of pockets. I mean, it's a bag of pizza ingredients. How bad can it be? Right. Well, let me give little Caesars a spin at it. That's a good point. <laughs> See how it goes. I can't, I'm very surprised you've never had pockets. <sighs> I don't think I have. Let me look up. Just to see if maybe a logo or something will jog a memory. Yeah, I'm trying to find like a good representative picture of it on their website, but their website's no. like designed for. No, uh, this doesn't look familiar at all. Okay. Yeah, it won't. It won't give me a good picture because it's. It's like the website is designed to place the order. Oh. Okay. Right, well, you know what? I'll give. I'll have pockets this week and report back. Okay. Yeah, that's good. Okay, I've got one last quick one. Before we get to Ask a Fats, uh, I had a waffle this week. You sure did. Oh, oh, oh did yeah. I ever. <laughs> this thing. So the thing is with the guys that I work with now, uh, also large humans. Mm-hmm. So. That's the way to put it. Yes. So we get to this. We get to Bentley's Pancake House at 142 East Lake Street in Bloomingdale. They, the guys start talking about waffles. They like breakfast food a lot more than I do, which has put me in situations to have more breakfast food, which isn't a bad thing. Well, then all of a sudden, somehow we got derailed. And I think it started with me saying this s'more pancakes or s'more waffle sounds really good. And everybody just got like dessert waffles for lunch. Let me read what this monstrosity is to you. because okay. It is wonderful. Dark milk and white chocolate chips Mm -hmm. with toasted marshmallows, which, by the way, on the menu, marshmallows is spelled wrong. It's marshmallows on the on the menu as opposed to mallows. Uh, Crushed graham cracker. Chocolate sauce and powdered sugar. And they were like, do you want the whipped cream? And I said, if I'm going this far, do you think I'm going to stop at whipped cream? (laughs) No, no, I I shouldn't. (laughs) Yeah. Watching my girlish figure. Yeah, right. Sorry. It was, I'm t- man, just for what it is, it can't be bad. And it wasn't. Give me that. It was really again. good. You said Roselle? Uh, in 142 East Lake Street in Bloomingdale. Bloomingdale. Where the hell did I get Roselle? I don't know. Okay. However, like that is, that's good. Like it's exactly what you want. You want a taste of a s'more with a nice fluffy waffle. You're getting that. And from what I hear, that's just like a solid breakfast lunch option for other things as well. Cause I mentioned it to Sam. She's like, Oh, I've been to this place before. Like that place is good. So, uh, 142 East Lake street in Bloomingdale, Bentley's pancake house. And even the, uh, our server was kind of giving us a little bit of crap because, uh, one of the guys got a s'more one and then another one got like an apple pie yeah, you're waffle, three fat children. Yes, and the other two got scoops of ice cream on theirs as well, and I was the one that didn't. <laughs> Breakfast of champions. <laughs> I'm telling you, man, it was like 12, 30, 1 o'clock, and we're like, all right, lunch. What are we going to do today? Let's go get let's go get dessert waffles with, with goddamn ice cream on them. you got to start getting into the savior, savory breakfast, too. Yeah. Oh, I, I do a little bit. Like, bis- biscuits and gravy is my jam. You're not an egg guy, are you? I'm getting more into eggs. Yeah, gotta, I'm not like I truly enjoy eggs, but like give me some scrambled eggs with stuff and I'll throw hot sauce and pepper on it and we'll call it a day. Stay clear of the breakfast burritos. Too much of the chilaquiles. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Get into breakfast foods. They're the best. <laughs> All right. We're getting long somehow. We should get to ask a fat. Something we're not used to. Well, that's sadly true. Ask a fat about this and that. It's time to chat with the fans. 
No voicemails again. 708-858-3314. I know it's cold and we're all laying around. Let's not be lazy. Come on. Let's go. That means you have more time to still call us. Even Jason from Oshkosh didn't leave us a voicemail. Man. We're slumming it. Slumming it big time. Well, send us one. Mm 708-858-3314. Email us. I'm fatpod at gmail.com. And as always, Ask a Fats brought to you by our buddy, Charlie the Bacon Guy, and here he is with this week's Bacon Report. Thanks, Jay. This week we have maple pepper, French toast, jardinier, and rosemary bacon. On the smoker as I record this is Old Bay, Cajun, Six Pepper, and Malort. No. Bacon jams are the original, the bourbon, and the spicy. I'm going to stick with those three flavors of bacon jams for a little while. Good idea. See how they sell and uh, see if we can make some more flavorful ones in the future. Don't forget about all the merch that we have. For the Bacon Report, I'm Charlie the Bacon Guy. I just want the old Bay bacon so bad. Yeah. By I the bet. way, how about he, Charlie inadvertently went with my awful joke of he went from six pepper and then we're definitely none the richer for going right from that to Malort. <laughs> I'm glad that he said it under his breath because I think it yeah. was a special request. It, I'm pretty sure it was, yeah. and he's like actually ashamed. Yeah. Well, I'm sure it's terrible, and I'm not interested. Thank you. Um, anyway, get yourself some of those other great bacons, because they all sound good <laughs> except that. Yeah. Charlie the bacon guy at gmail.com, at Charlie the bacon guy on Instagram, at CZ the bacon guy on Twitter. Website coming soon, Mark. <laughs> get yourself some bacon. It freezes up great. It's all vacuum sealed. No need to worry about it going bad. Get a ton of it. As we mentioned earlier with Fredo's Bakery, getting some bacon as a gift for the holidays is a brilliant idea. The people you love are going to love the gift and promise you no one else is getting them bacon. That should be your thing. Get everybody a couple pounds of bacon, all these different flavors. I know Charlie's going to have a bunch more like as the holidays approach. And if you've got a flavor in mind or an old flavor that you really like, if you order enough of it, he's going to make it for you. So if you, ah, you know, I didn't hear the ranch bacon, but I really like that. I want to get mm-hmm. more of that. Hit him up. He'll make you some ranch bacon. Charlie, the bacon guy, gmail.com at Charlie, the bacon guy on Instagram at CZ, the bacon guy on Twitter website coming soon. Allegedly. Also to quote the great philosopher. Yes. Barry Rosner. Mm-hmm. In reference to the holidays. Yes. We're not that far away. No, it's, I can't believe it's October 15th. I know. What the hell? When? Dude, I have no idea. That's crazy. Yeah. It's insane. So people got to start thinking about holiday things now. Yes, for sure. At work, we have like one of those like calendars where you like flip the date over. Yeah. And I, like yesterday I went to flip it. I'm like, that can't be right. It's not, it's not the 14th. Mm-hmm. Oh my God, it's the 14th? What the hell? When yeah. did that happen? Well, anyway. All right, so we have no voicemails today, as we mentioned. Uh, a couple emails, though. Uh, this one comes from Matt. He says, hey, guys, my wife and I are staying in Sister Bay, Wisconsin. And remember, Jay, talking about Fish Creek. Any food recommendations or other fun events you've been to while there? Appreciate it. Also, car fridge season is upon us. Yes, it is. I've got a case of Diet Coke in the back of my yes, car. Yes, it is. It's great. Okay, so uh, I talked about... I don't know if I talked about this on the pod, but I the best meal I've ever had in my life mm-hmm. is Wickman House in Door County. They're closing. Um, they're selling. So they're going to be closed like around Valentine's Day. So if you're in Door County before then, absolutely go to Wickman House. I'm not kidding you. It's a high-end meal. It's got great cocktails. It's not cheap, but it is a five-star, like, deluxe awesome awesome one of the best meals you will ever have kind of meals get there before they close otherwise in door county you can't really go wrong lots of stuff is good like sister bay bowl good food you're going to be served by a 75 year old woman that's worked there for 50 years and you may not get your drink as quickly as you'd like but remember you're in wisconsin you're on vacation pace yourself uh, L Johnson's of course is the famous place with the goats on the roof. So there's that place is great for breakfast. All the food in door County is good. If it wasn't good, it wouldn't be open quite frankly, but I have to, I just got to tell you go to Wickman house. And why am I blanking on the, Oh, coffee shop. My favorite coffee shop on the planet is the blue horse. 
uh, right there on the water. Uh, the Blue Horse is great. So get some coffee there. You can go there for breakfast. They got like breakfast sandwiches and burritos and stuff like that. Um, Stay clear of the breakfast burritos. Too much of the chilaquiles. Not there, though. <clears throat> you don't have to steer clear at the Blue Horse. By the way, that's from uh, my favorite show, What We Do in the Shadows. If mm-hmm. you've never watched What We Do in the Shadows, it is an office-style show that is about vampires currently living in Staten Island. So it's like the documentary style show. It is my yeah. favorite show. If you've never watched it, watch it. It's great. Um, so those would be my recommendations, but you really can't go wrong. I know, though, I've seen, like, I'm on a lot of the Facebook pages, like Door County Vacationers. There's a lot of stuff closing up there. And I'm a little mm. bit concerned that maybe these, like, this is happening a lot of places where, like, foreign investors are coming in and they're just buying places and building huge like living spaces yeah and kind of i don't know i'm a little bit concerned with the way i see like some really iconic door county stuff closing lately so hopefully hopefully Mm -hmm. it's just a a fluke and just a little limited thing but it's not good i really don't want to see door county change from the door county i know so yeah yeah all right the next one is from gary jay while you're in Pittsburgh for the Connor Bedard debut, I mm-hmm. highly suggest you check out Permanti Brothers, which, yeah. The downtown location at Two Market Square is fun. If you have time, sit at the counter and watch them make your sandwich, which is loaded with fresh cut fries and coleslaw. They also have a location in Ye Ole Airport. Okay, so everyone's telling me this, and I, I didn't, like, not want to go. Mm-hmm. But it was more of a time thing. But let, let's let's give this place the, some attention that it needs. So I'm looking here okay. at the website, and it looks good. Like these are big old sandwiches with yeah. fries on them. Like keep I, your coleslaw off my sandwich. Yeah, yeah. really. Let's let's not uh, kind of see the restaurant. But this is a new thing that bugs me about websites. Just show me the menu. Right. All right. So the Capicola and cheese that looks good. Angus sirloin steak and cheese, ham and mm-hmm. cheese, Pittsburgher. Okay, like this looks good. Mm -hmm. But is it, this is my question though, for next time I go to Pittsburgh, and I'll go back. Is it because they put the fries on the sandwich to make it great, or is the sandwich actually great? This is my question. And from what I gathered, is that Promonte Brothers is not a place that the locals go. It's almost like the Chicago equivalent of Giordano's. Yeah. Which, Giordano's is good. Mm-hmm. Like, if I had Giordano's for the first time, I would say, damn, that was amazing. But I like to go places where the locals go. Yes. I don't know. That's just kind of how, I, how I've how i always liked to do it. Um, I'll try it next time I go. I promise. It was just a time thing more than anything on this one. So, yeah. sorry. Sorry, Gary and Charlie. Um, Chris and Joliet says, I parked next to a car that had this sticker on it. Uh, and he sent me the sticker. And we've a bunch of people have sent us the sticker. By the way, and I don't think we've ever um, we've ever actually shared one of them before. It's the "Don't Park Too Close to Me, I'm Fat" sticker. Yes, which is a, <laughs> a fantastic sticker. It's really good. I don't I don't know if I could bring myself to put that on my car. Yeah, I, I I don't know. I think I'm past, and maybe I'm getting old. I think I'm past putting stickers on my car. Maybe. Yeah, I've got a Grateful Dead um, "Steal Your Face" thing on the back of my car. But it's okay. like metallic and it looks classy. It's not like just a bumper sticker. Um, yeah. But yeah, I, I feel like people would be killing themselves to get over and look at me driving to see how fat I am. And I, you know, I pick it's, my nose in my car too often for that. I don't need that shit. It's a life. great concept, though. <laughs> Definitely. Have you watched the um, uh, Kelsey thing uh, documentary on Amazon Prime? No. One, you should. It's good. It's like an hour... I want to say it's like an hour and a half hour 40 just it's and the th- interesting thing is with everything that's happening now is it's all from jason kelsey's point of view is something happening now with the kelsey's hmm don't know i missed it i must have missed this right. new story right before we started recording may have watched uh last night's saturday night live just because of possible special guests who knows oh yeah i gotta watch that tonight i'm looking for i didn't this snuck up on me man I know. I'm an SNL and you know, I'm not, one. Yeah, and I'm not. But, uh, you know, Pete Davidson hosting and, you know. So, yeah, it was good. 
it was it was a good episode but um but yeah so in that what made me think of that is it's like jason's playing with his kids and his wife is like telling the kid not to pick their nose and jason's like it's fine pick your nose eat the boogers i eat the boogers <laughs> <laughs> he's just it's like this for far. one thing right for one thing like everything you think about jason kelsey is like 100 percent true like he's just like that dude and is totally cool and just like like dad cool you know what i like about both of them but especially mm. jason comfortable in his own skin man Yes. He doesn't care. Like, zero Fs to give. Mm -hmm. I envy that big time. Like, he's like, hey, man, I'm Jason Kelsey. I've made it already. Yeah. I got a Super Bowl. I got a super successful podcast. My brother's banging Taylor Swift. Like, what, mm -hmm. more, <laughs> right. what, what, more, what more do we need? How, like, what argument can we lose at this point? Right. You know? So, and by the way, good for mm -hmm. both Travis Kelsey yes. and Taylor Swift. Mm -hmm. Both, like, you know, I... She is obviously happy. Like the most famous person on the planet, probably. Yeah, which is kind of crazy. Perhaps too famous. Agreed. Not her fault. It does no. not seem her level of fame does not seem fun. Correct. It's also, too much. I think she has a fantastic like PR team and stuff. What? So like I, I think they're very good at that. I have to say too though, like she has been pretty good about like the right side of things saying the right things mm -hmm. without like really rocking the boat too much like she's sure takes care of her people and seems mm -hmm. like a good person so and i uh, travis kelsey man when he hosted snl that was a great episode he's funny like he they're act. both really funny yeah. yeah yeah so anyway it was good maybe it's just a tight end thing like him and gronk both but he's more like gronk is just more goofy with it where like travis can actually like do it yeah gronk is into being the character of gronk yes whereas kelsey's like i can act i can mm -hmm. i can do this yeah tell me what to do and i'll do it and he, he right. did an awesome job on that on snl yeah all right anyway um sorry okay next one's from rob who just confirmed as we've been doing our search of the jewels to see if there are baker square pies there are at the lake zurich jewels quote Looks like we might have a great thing going on, guys. Very good. And speaking of great things, I can't share his name or their name, I should say. Mm -hmm. But our Culver's insider mm -hmm. treated himself to some Rosangelas. Yes, he did. Send some photos. You see uh, a sausage there, maybe two sausage. Mm -hmm. Looks like a sausage and pepperoni. Yeah. Oh, yeah. He did. Oh, 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 there you oh, go. Oh, boy. That's Rosangelas I know, baby. That is mm -hmm. good stuff been too long i'm gonna have to get out there this week and then we've got one more i think yes uh from matt he says jay since i know you're a lover of prime yes i am i thought mm -hmm. you'd i uh, tell you about the newest flavor they have out if you haven't tried it already it's called Glowberry. it appears to be a sort of halloween themed bottle and the flavor is described as sour apple berry i've had it a couple of times and i think it'd be willing to rank near the top of my favorite flavors i found it at walmart and it was just curious if you've tried it yet i did try it i did like it but I have not seen it since. And I think I hmm. saw it at Jewel. Um, but I usually buy, when I buy my Prime, I usually get like the variety pack because it's cheaper to buy it that way. Yeah. So it's the red, the green, and the blue. I don't think there's a fourth in there. Yeah, I think that's it. So that's usually what I have around the house. Um, I still think the blue is my favorite. And I like the ice pop a lot. Yep, um, those are my top two. Yeah. I tried, by the way, I tried the lemonade <laughs> one. Yeah. Did not love it. Lemonade or lemon lime? Lemonade, like yellow, a oh, yellow okay. bottle. The lemon lime. I like the lemon good. lime. Yeah, I like lemon the lemon lime good. a lot. But the yellow one, I I gotta try it again because I had it with chocolate, and I think it okay. probably like I had like a candy bar and a lemonade prime, and I think maybe sure. it kind of killed the flavor a little bit. So yeah, I will try that again. Okay. But yeah, days when I up, need, days when I need some pickup, prime is uh is a candidate for me, like the the actual energy drink version. I've not had the energy one. I feel like when I drink stuff like that, my heart rips out mm -hmm. of my chest. I don't like that. It feeling. could. I think yeah. mine might be uh, either A, I'm more used to my heart ripping out of my chest, or B, uh, I think my heart might just be more used to such things. Perhaps. Like just because I I, cons I consume energy drinks probably more than I should, but I also don't drink coffee. So it's kind of like a trade-off in that regard. Yeah. But I really like the primes. Like blue raspberry, ice pop, lemonade, those are lemon lime those are the top three all right 
Fair enough. All right. Follow us on all of our social media at I'm Fat Pod, I'm Fat Pod at gmail.com. Check out the Patreon or Spotify if you like to contribute as well. And I'm Fat Merch.com. Again, uh, towards the end of the month, I believe it's the 26th through the 29th is the next sale. Again, if you want to get ahead on some of your holiday purchases that need to happen, that's a great way to be able to do so and give yourself plenty of time for any weird shipping snafus, you know, that could that could always happen uh, and still have time to have presents ready. YouTube.com slash I'm fat podcast, subscribe and also like each video that helps us out a lot, even if you're not actually watching said videos. But hey, if you want to hit play, even if you don't intend to actually listen, put the thing on mute, have it as a background tab while you're doing work or God knows what else. That's cool, too. And then subscribe, unsubscribe, resubscribe, unsubscribe, resubscribe to the regular podcast feed. Leave us a five-star rating or a review. We haven't had a a new review since like mid-June. Come on. That would be wonderful to get a new review. So that would be much appreciated from anybody out there. And the best thing you can do is check out our sponsors. Charlie the Baking Guy, Mazda of Orland Park, Fredo's Culinary Kitchen, and Nick and Ivy Brewing. So for Jay, I'm Rick, and this is the I'm Fat Podcast. 55 burgers, 55 fries, 55 tacos, 55 pies, 55 cokes, 100 tater tots, 100 pizzas, 100 tenders, 100 meatballs, 100 coffees, 55 wings, 55 shakes, 55 pancakes, 55 pasta, 55 peppers, and 155 taters.